And we welcome you back to Q&A. Uh, we will remind you once again now, be sure to write down our contact information, toll-free phone number, email, or you can send it through regular mail. And we'd love to hear from you and get your, your question or questions in the loop for Q&A. Let's go back. We're going to have a roundtable discussion for a few moments on the questions that we've covered in today's program. And David, I really appreciated the thorough uh, uh, treatment that you gave on the, the matter of uh, interpreting the Bible and the right. Is it not appropriate to say that there is no inspired opinions? Uh, could we not safely say that? Sure. Uh, you know, we were talking during the break. You have those inspired interpretations mm -hmm. like Jesus offered, and I read in Matthew 24, yeah. 15. But, uh, but that's true. Uh, you know, the Bible by nature is objective in meaning. Mm -hmm. There's only one meaning placed into the text, and it's our job to go and draw that meaning out, mm -hmm. to be exegetes sure. of the Bible. And um, so there's certainly no variance of opinion offered on, on the Bible right. in that regard. Uh, we, we just don't want people thinking that there's no way you could ever approach the Bible and, and, and have no ability, no hope of ever understanding it. To, you know, that idea has been passed off throughout the centuries, but it's mm -hmm. certainly not true. Uh, that's, uh, Peter's not suggesting that you can't read and understand the Bible. Uh, his point was more toward the origin of the message, um, not necessarily the interpretation of it. But yes, there's no, today there'd be certainly no inspired uh, opinion of the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, which, which theory is passed off in certain circles. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Charles? And, and I appreciate uh, Brother David's answer, thorough answer on that. But would it also not be a self-contradictory thing to read Second Peter 1 so you can't interpret the Bible for yourself, but you've just made an interpretation just made on what you've read here in Second Peter 1, 20 yeah. and 21. You four, have four fingers are pointing back at you. Now you have uh, interpreted three fingers. those verses. If you yeah. can interpret these two, why not other verses? Right. It's a good so point. self-contradictory. Anything else? Good. Okay, we're good for gold. And on the second one, profit sharing and matchmaking. You, you emphasize, Charles, you're working. You're mm -hmm. working. You're making a profit. Yes, and even the parable of the, uh, the landowner who gave his servants uh, the talents uh -huh. shows that there is a profit motive in things. But that is far different than right. uh, uh, gambling, which is covetousness. I think that's right, David, and the, the point that you just stressed, even in the parable that Jesus gave, they went out and they multiplied mm -hmm. what they had, sure. which shows they were out working, whereas gambling is always in a form of no work. You say, well, the work is walking. It's a wager. It's yeah. yeah, a wager, walking to the counter. Yeah. Walking. But that's a, that's a totally <laughs> different thing. But, you know, we talked, David, about the uh, idea of covetousness. Mm -hmm. There may be those that wanted to write the verses down. Ephesians 5.5 5 and Colossians 3.5 mm -hmm. talk about covetousness, which is idolatry. Mm -hmm. And in reality, we can make material things our idol uh, by the desire of gaining more and more. And uh, that's just really permeating and strangling our society today. What about it? anything you know, else? I'll just quickly say, you know, we're told in 2 Thessalonians 3.10, if anyone will not work, he shouldn't eat. Yeah, right. And in 1 Timothy 6.17 and 18, regarding those that have money, he says one thing they should do with it is that they do good, they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Mm -hmm. I know there's a spiritual mm -hmm. application primarily, but what better way that, you know, in a, in a fiscal way could you use money than to invest it and create jobs to right. alleviate, alleviate poverty? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's a good point. Good point. All right, very good. Let's go on to the third one. Uh, where does the Bible say we should not call a preacher reverend? I, I particularly like the uh, New King James rendering of that word reverend in Psalm 111, 9, awesome. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine myself as being called someone who is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I would think God is awesome. He's mm -hmm. mighty, <laughs> but not David Wade. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me mention something and just sort of sum this up. Where does the Bible say we should not call a uh, preacher reverend? Well, where does it say that we should? Right, and, and it doesn't. Yeah. But really, it, it violates just a core form of, of understanding, and, and you, you mentioned it. This is what is to be said of God. Jehovah is the one to be revered. Mm -hmm. Well, whenever you apply that to yourself, and I've seen people, and I'm sure we all have, who they want to be called reverend. Sure. They want to be seen as someone who is more holy than other people. They want to be distinguished by the clothes they wear. And whenever I read Matthew chapter 23, as we looked at earlier, verses 5 through 12, I see that. That's mm -hmm. exactly the attitude sure. of, uh, of the Pharisees and scribes in Jesus' day. Sure. But what it violates is 
who is it that a preacher is to revere and honor? It's God, sure. not himself. You don't want to draw attention to yourself. You want to draw attention to God and his word. And I think that, that uh, what John said in 1 John chapter 4, by their fruits, or, or that we can know a, a, a false teacher by, by their works. Mm -hmm. We can know uh, out of the shadow of a doubt. When someone wants to bring attention to them, they want to pass the collection plate around and get money for them. They want to have a television program that mm -hmm. says, send in your money. You can know immediately. Sure. These, folks, these folks aren't serious about the Lord and That's His right. will. That's right. What else? Go ahead, Charlie. <laughs> well, where in the Bible, very quickly, where in the Bible, do you ever read of Reverend Paul or Reverend Peter, mm -hmm. Reverend James or John? You don't. You, you ask people, I think, like Shane has said, and we've tried to emphasize, uh, where does the Bible say to do it? Where do we have examples of where it was done in the New Testament by those preachers? They identified themselves as bond servants sure. of the Lord, not Slaves. Reverend Paul or Reverend Peter. Or, or even St. Paul or St. Peter. No, he didn't even use that. that, didn't use that, that, was, that was added mm -hmm. by translators. Sure. So. All right, your next day. You know, I would just simply summarize what Shane's already said. You know, those titles move emphasis away from the Godhead. Any man that would use a title as such to place himself on par with God. Well, that's, according to Matthew 23, that's an exhibition of pride. To exalt yourself yeah, is. is an exhibition of pride. And then the practical effect of that is that it destroys the equality among, among brethren because sure. we're all one. In fact, he even says that. All, you are all brethren, according to Matthew 23, verse mm -hmm. 8. So anything that would differentiate between the equality that exists between members of the body would be wrong. And uh, Jesus just said, don't do it. Uh, even though he doesn't use the word reverend, he uses father, rabbi, and masters, which would be uh, a synecdoche for all of them. It's just a, sure. it's, it's a small form of every religious title. Don't use religious titles. And so we need to stay away from that for the very reasons yes. that we suggested. And in some cases, uh, this word reverend is a form of address that is appropriate until such time as one earns his doctorate. <laughs> and then that title is usually dropped and the, the other is taken up. And I, I see concern about that, especially when the person himself is referring to himself as right. this person with a title. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, that's about all the time we've got for today's program. We appreciate you being a part of it. And remember, we're waiting to hear from you. you by now, you should have our contact information down. And we'll hope to hear from you very soon. It's been a pleasure being with you on Questions and Answers. And in behalf of Shane Robinson and Charles Cochran and David Smith, I'm David Wade, your host. We hope and trust that you'll continue to watch for this program and all the good programming on GBN. And until we meet again, may God bless you and yours.